eBay Motors is here for the ride. Elbow grease and a whole lot of love transformed 100,000 miles and a body full of rust into a drive entirely its own. LED headlights, spoilers, whatever you need. eBay Motors has it at affordable prices. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, it's guaranteed to fit your ride every time. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. You're listening to Castrol CarCast on Podcast One. Coming soon to Podcast One, Red Circle Sports with Dennis Miller. Get your weekend sports roundup every Tuesday exclusively from Podcast One and comedian Dennis Miller. He's going through and circling the most exciting headlines so you don't have to and bringing you a lot of laughs along with them. Be sure to download new episodes of Red Circle Sports with Dennis Miller every Tuesday on the Podcast One app, Apple Podcasts, or at PodcastOne.com. Get it on, got to get it on, no choice but to get on, man, get it on. Welcome to CarCast, I'm Adam Carolla, it's Matt the Motor Radio, Andrew over there, man. How you doing? Good, man, I'm um, always excited to uh, do something with car something, something. I'm, uh, I was waking up, <laughs> I got up this morning and I thought, uh, I gotta write Oscar jokes, yeah. and then I thought... But I want to do car stuff. <laughs> I was like nine, and I was like, I want to do. And then I then I started picturing all those people sitting around the table where we write the Oscar jokes, yeah. and I thought, I don't think any of them want to do car stuff. No, I don't think they even know what a car is. No. Like there's some kind of weird. How many Priuses are in the parking lot when you roll up to that place? There. Are... Thirteen riders and fourteen Priuses. We have a backup Prius in case one Prius the charge goes down yeah. on it or something. Yeah. So uh there's that. Um somebody sent me the Petrolicious uh little tape of uh, uh Newman two eighty ZX uh, turbo car. Yeah, that was good. Thanks to every single person that sent that to me. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> but they always go, Is this your car? Yeah. And I go, nah. No. But it's a really cool car. It has a different front rim than a back rim, yeah. and it bothers me. You know and- what? <laughs> this is the only thing that only you will appreciate is they kept showing this video, like kind of panning across the car, like a little bit on the interior, and the steering wheel wasn't straight. Oh. And I kept noticing, and I'm like, come on, come on, just turn the wheel when you're for that shot. They have like a BBS rear and a goatee <laughs> yeah. front, which is how they ran the car. Yeah. But I still think if I own that car, I would swap them around, just run two Goaties or two BBS. That's it, right. It you got the real me. ones. You got it figured out. You it, can do whatever you want after would. that. Yeah, they did it, a nice job restoring that car. It looked great on the track. That was a nice piece. Yeah, I agree. And it's a the Newman cars. There's a a group of Newman cars that I don't have, which is a C production naturally aspirated Z car, which won the championship. And that's just straight six, you know, 270 horsepower or something. Then they did, I think, a couple of turbo cars uh, in the 280ZX, uh, straight six. Um, so just so you know, I have the tube frame V6 300 yeah. ZXs. These are 280s, straight six. They did a big turbo on them. And I believe a sort of legend has it that there's one tub car, which becomes like half a tub car because by the time they're done welding in all the braces and firewall braces and cages. And, yeah, the front and, half and, or the and, kind of front half, back half are all tube frame at that point. It's kind it's of. like it's the kind of tubby in the middle. The and yeah, it's like the shock tower mounts, but they do all the bracing. All this, so they're like quasi tub cars. And look, all yeah. race cars that are tub cars are sort of quasi tub cars because you end up putting in a bunch of braces and yeah. cages and stuff. But they really kept going. And then at a certain point, uh, it turned in. I think there is a full tube frame version of that car. So says less. Somewhere, but no one really knows. And if you watch old footage of of Newman racing, you will see a fair amount of those cars uh, 
And I don't have any of those cars. I, yeah. There's a lot of Numa cars. You got to, you know, keep in mind, this guy raced for 40 years. Yes. You know, what the um, Newman cars that we have. There's 10. There's 10 Newman cars that you have now. So Right. And as I, as I believe, if you go through the seasons, we have the car that he drove and let's just say – I'm trying to think I'm going to screw this up. So in order seasons, I'm not going all the way back, but we have his 85 season car, yeah. his 86 season car. Wait a minute. Where's the 87 season car? I think there was oh, the one two car. Plus two. Yeah, we have the 87 season car. We have the 88 season car. We have the 89 season car and the 90 season car. And those are the five seasons in a row and then after that it's like the weird two plus two v8 the t- twin turbo v8 car and the tr6 and stuff yeah. sporadic stuff that uh, 200 sx and that kind of stuff when i was going through the through the binders there was it, it looked like there was some crossover like we see them as the 85 86 87 88 but i think we're confusing with two of the seasons like the 85 and 86 and then the year of the cars, the 87 and 88. Because yeah. when I went through the binders, it looked like one of the cars was raced for two seasons. It might have been the 86. Yeah. The car it, we're calling the, you know, because it was like, it's just four cars, but I believe there was like five racing seasons out of yeah, the four cars. There's a lot of and that. And I didn't even notice it until I went like, we, you know, I was trying to reorganize the big binders. And I was like, there's something missing here. And you're looking at all the, all the race uh, uh, logs. Right. And um, so I, I, I think it's, you know, the cars are like 84, 1984, 1985 cars, and then an 87 and 88 car. So there's a season in there that it looked like when I was going through, there's four cars in five seasons. Well, either way, we have 10 and three of the four championship cars, but there's still other cars out there. And... There's many cars I'd I'd love to have in my collection, mm-hmm. but uh, after the sale of that watch, uh, I don't know how realistic <laughs> any of those purchases are going to be. <laughs> yeah, there was a there was a method to our madness. We were were like, hey, let's do a Paul Newman documentary. That's a great idea. Let's try to find as many cars before the movie comes out to see if they're for sale. You know, because potentially the movie could drive up the price of those cars. So we found several. You know, and then the watch was. The watch going for seventeen point eight million dollars, I think, was kind of a game changer for, uh, and rightfully so. I think I think it's time that Newman got recognized as valuable memorabilia, mm-hmm. with or without the car stuff. You know, the car stuff, of course, but I think all of his stuff deserves some love that you know McQueen and other guys have gotten. Yeah, uh, yeah, I. Uh... I, I agree, and uh, you know it was a market that didn't exist, and no one wanted. You know, when I half those cars I bought, no one really wanted them at the time. Uh, that much I remember. Uh, Craig Jackson is coming on, CEO of Bear Jackson, of course. Um, you're going to be out at Bear Jackson. I love watching Bear Jackson. I, it, you know, you and I we we talk about this for weeks and weeks ahead of time, but um, but yeah, I'm going to cruise out there uh, probably as a week from from now. Um, I'll be out in uh, in Scottsdale. I'm going to swing by RM and Gooding and Bear Jackson, and uh, I know there's plenty of other auctions and Russo and and I think Silver Auction, Bottoms Auction. There's a lot going on, but um, but the party is always at Bear Jackson. That's always an exciting event. We're meeting, you know, Brad Fanshaw, my co-host on Shift and Steer, and Michael Anthony from Van Halen, it's his business partner, and it's a whole group of people that'll be going. So it's going to be fun. And there's some cool cars we definitely want to go and see. Yeah. Well, let's. Uh, give me one second, uh, Max Pata. I'll tell you guys uh, quickly before Craig calls in and we get into some of this uh, stuff. Irvine Improv, January 25th, Cobra, the live base cable breakdown with Mike August. And then uh, I'll be doing stand-up at the Kennedy Center in Washington, D.C., February 9th. Stand-up, Thunder Valley Casino, March 2nd uh, in uh, – Sacramento, and uh, you can go to amcorolla.com and find out all the stuff. Go to Corolla Drinks and uh, find out what's going on over there. Say hi to the net. Now, uh, if we go to the website, if we go to the Barrett Jackson website, Jackson website, we can see some of the uh, 
some of the featured cars. Uh, I love watching the extended coverage on like a discovery and velocity. Like they just run yeah. it and I just watch just it. Just watch it all the time. You can have it on all day in the background, no matter what you're doing. You hear something come across the block, it piques your interest. Like, yeah, I want to see what's going on there. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah, I agree. And I think Max Pata, you can look it up, but I think Craig has semi frequently driven his. Trans Am car at Laguna Seca for the Monterey Historics. I believe he has a Challenger. I, think. I thought javelin? he had a Javelin. Oh, Javelin. Yeah. Maybe yeah. it's a Javelin. Yeah. Yes, I'm sorry, but we'll like to see that. Was it? But it wasn't a. Was it a red, white, it's and a red white and blue one? Oh, it was. I believe. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, then, uh, then I lied. <laughs> uh, I thought I saw him driving the green. Dodge he might have more than one. He's Challenger. got a good collection. I'm always curious to know what yeah. he's got new in his collection and stuff. Mm-hmm. You know. All right, so he'll be on the phone uh, momentarily. And yeah, we'll, well speak to in him. The, in the meantime, why don't I uh, tell you about Geico? Yeah, man. You know, Geico. He's, uh, everybody's got this to do list. You drop off your dry cleaning. You pick up some milk. You're running errands around. So why not save hundreds of dollars? Add that to your list. And you don't have to drop off or pick up anything. You just go to Geico.com, and in 15 minutes, you could be saving 15% or more on your car insurance. So if you need some extra money in your pocket, you want some Barrett-Jackson tickets, you want some auction tickets like I do, you know, you can uh, go to Geico.com, and this is the most rewarding to do you can do today. The uh, We were over at Leno's Garage on uh, Saturday doing some filming, but I won't tell you what we're filming because uh, you'll find out when you watch Jay Leno's Garage. But um, had a nice time with Jay and uh, some other notables uh, over yeah. there. Um, Jay, uh, happy. Uh, ratings are good. Yeah. Um, I- oh, I just saw on social media, um, he just posted either this morning or last night we're just starting season three of Jay Leno's Garage, and he posted saying that season four is going to happen. Oh, great. Yeah, so that's good for them. Congratulations. And congratulations to uh, Craig Jackson, who's online, too. Craig, great to speak to you. How are you? Doing well. Hey, Craig. Oh, well, we're getting ready for the big auction. Oh, yeah. man. It's fun, right? I mean, it's it's got to be crazy for you, but it also has to be just what, what gets you out of bed every morning, right? You know, it's crazy, but I grew up in this environment, and uh, I'm a little ADD, so this much attention uh, and multiple things going on is good. So, <laughs> we, uh, we Obviously, Matt's going to be down there, and yeah. as, as Matt and I have discussed uh, many times off the air, there are plenty of auctions going on, but there's only one party going on, and that's Barrett Jackson. Right. Yeah, we really started this whole thing, you know, and it's unique because normally when there's all these other auctions, they come around to Concord or vintage races, but Barrett Jackson is its own festival in itself. So there's nothing this big in the world. Um, quite simply, we do three, we'll probably do with great weather, 350 plus thousand people through the gates, million, over a million square feet under tent, almost a million one hundred thousand now because we, Put up a bigger structure this year, and you know we'll do north of a hundred million in sales, uh, seventeen hundred and seventy cars right now going up for auction, and you know there's nothing else this size. But as you said, it's a party. It starts off literally with a party on Sunday night for about seven thousand of our closest friends, and uh, it continues on from there. Live television. And multiple things to do here at the event. And we keep adding stuff every year. Well, I, I'm so happy as an enthusiast. Like, I, 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 it, my heart gets warm when I go out to Laguna Seca and I see it's crowded yeah. for the vintage races. Where 10 years ago, it wasn't crowded. You looked up into the bleachers and there wasn't anyone sitting there after turn four or five or whatever that is. Now... It's crowded yeah. up there. And I, I love it that people are coming out and bringing their kids. I'm sure you see lots of families and tons of young sons and daughters and everything, and they're just getting indoctrinated now. They're going to be bringing their kids in 10 years, right? Yep. Well, actually, we started years ago on Saturday. This Saturday coming up is Family Value Day, and we let kids in for free. There's no auction that day, but it's to get kids involved. 
I got to tell you a quick story. First year I did it, we had no idea. We're like, well, there's no auction. How many people are going to show up? We guessed 3,500, 5,000. 30,000 showed up. It's one of our busiest days. We'll do 50,000 people on Family Value Day, and it's all families together with kids, and that's what's really important to us. The television helps. We've been getting a lot of kids involved. In fact, in Mohegan Sun, we had a 15-year-old, a pair of brothers, that bought a uh, Smokey and the Bandit Trans Am car. They've been watching Barrett Jackson their whole time, and they brought it there to sell. And that was their first time of actually participating. So we love bringing the next generation along. And it's also changed the mix of cars. You know, you've got to keep evolving. And the cars keep evolving. And, you know, Dennis Collins is selling that whole collection that he has of the Fox body. Yeah, he is. Yeah, you know? that's, Matt's, that's Matt's wheelhouse <laughs> yeah. right there. Looking yep. forward to that. You know, Craig, I saw, I saw um, some more interesting cars. You know, um, we're looking at some of the feature cars. You've got the two Shelbys. You've got the, uh, the prototype uh, GT350. And then you've got the race car with, like, the most racing history. And then one of the cars, um, well, at least... The, the some of the cars that Adam and I have been discussing the past uh, week or two as we're scrolling through uh, through your website is we're seeing more really cool European cars. We saw like I think you have a Ferrari three hundred and thirty two uh, plus two going up there and um, a two twelve. Yeah, and the two twelve. So you've got some. Uh, you start getting more into into uh, these pretty special European cars as well. You, you know, know, you guys we, have been so known for the muscle cars, but now it's really starting to grow. It's everything, you know, from the beautiful Talbot Lago, that T26 Grand Sport with the South Czech coach work, you know, to a, a modern uh, 918 Spider, And, you know, car collecting make it really easy. When I grew up in it, it was all pre-war cars. And then my brother and I growing up, you know, as uh, baby boomers really brought the muscle cars into it and, you know, the European sports cars. But it, it has to keep progressing and getting uh, more encompassing, and that's what we try to do. Out of the 1,700 cars here, you will find something for everyone, and that's our goal. Where do you think the market <clears> – <throat> so, you know, Matt and I, we go to the auctions. We watch your program. We watch – you know, that's one of my favorite things to do is to just I, – <laughs> I just set that DVR – and I set it for uh, the Barrett Jackson auction, and I find I find myself sitting there for four hours of blinking. I didn't blink <laughs> once. Like I, it, the whole afternoon goes by. <laughs> yeah, every once in a while there'll be like a Woody wagon or something, and I'll fast forward a little uh, bit. But then yeah, I'll get going too fast. I'll get past something I wanted to see, and then I'll have to rewind. Go back, it. Yeah, yeah, and. Um, where do you and and so Matt and I talk about this all the time where you know the market was hot the market cooled off the market got hot for certain cars cooled off for other cars other categories the stock market seems to be up maybe a lot of people are freaked out about Trump and an uncertain future financially a year ago or so things have settled in the economy seems to be good where but don't let me put words in your mouth what's the market doing for collector cars well, the market right now is, you know, as you just said, certain cars are hot, certain cars go up, go down. Uh, you're seeing a lot of new people, the, about 40% of our buyers are first-timers. We spend a lot of time talking to people, their their goals and what do they want. And it's it's as diverse as it can be. But you're seeing people, like always, that want that car that they've always dreamed of, and that car keeps moving as we go along. Now, that doesn't mean that people don't appreciate, like this beautiful Southcheck, cars that are art of, you know, the, the uh, you know, pre- and post-war French cars and that. I think the big Ferraris had their big run-up, they flattened off, and it's caused people to really look at a lot of other cars. Cobras and Shelbys have been coming back strong. Hemi cars have. Um, you know, where they, in the recession, you know, got hit a little harder than most. Because they had gone through a big run-up in 06, 07. And then when the market corrected in 09, I mean the world market, um, it changed things. But you're also seeing a, a different... When people look at buying a collector car, they don't just look at numbers matching cars. They look at resto mods and 
And resto mods, you can resto mod anything from an E-type Jaguar to a, a vintage Rolls Royce. But pickup trucks have been super popular, station wagons, and now sport utilities. We sold a Blazer in Palm Beach for $220,000. Uh, two guys, it was, and it was the same story, both guys. It was their first vehicle, and this thing was restored. Absolutely unbelievable. Well, you but, say restored or resto modded. That one was restored. It, uh-huh. it had a little bit of tweaking just because, you know, smog equipment, stuff like that. It, it was made to run a little bit better. Yeah. But it, it looked pretty stock. Uh, but it was, guy did it with all NOS parts, and when to look at it from the outside, it looked bone stock. Uh, you're seeing Broncos bring great prices nowadays, and now that they're bringing the Bronco back. Yeah. And you go to SEMA, and you, what I do at SEMA is I look at who's making parts for what type of cars, and now you can build a Bronco pretty much just from the aftermarket world like you can a, a Camaro or a Mustang. And that whole resto mod part of the world is super popular, and it's gotten into the pickup trucks. It's gotten into the sport utility vehicles, you know, and we mine the Haggerty data, and, you know, the a lot of those cars have been some of the highest appreciating in the last couple of years. Well, let's uh, let's talk about resto mods for one second, because I am curious. First, let me yell at my staff. Put the featured cars up on the GD screen. Not the Monday, if you, but if, the, you, if you can, please. Like the, I, the, 20, the scooters 21st. and the... Uh, the Vespas I, I know, and I know. stuff it, we get. If you can get the, the, onto their website, I, Barrett Jackson, you can get the featured cars put on. If you can't, then you can't. Okay, I can't. Uh, okay, I'll, you can't. Okay. Um, we're trying to look at some of the cooler cars. Yeah, we're we talking saw the about. Bronco, the, or the uh, the the Blazer, the, the Blazer, and uh, it's a good looking truck. But so, and Craig, engine swap and, the 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 resto mod yeah. in in my experience was a few years ago. No matter what you threw into a car, whatever it was, you were throwing good money after bad. Like you might put 150 grand into doing a killer resto mod, but it still didn't matter. The thing was worth forty two thousand dollars. Now, if you do it right, people appreciate it and people will spend the money. Is that a correct statement? Yes, absolutely. You know, and Steve and I had a. It still baffles me every so often. You'll sell a, a fuel injected '57 Corvette for a buck seventy-five, beautiful car, and then you'll sell a resto mod for two twenty-five right after it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's it, but it's it's only we. I mean, it's weird to us because we were around to see when that car was forty-two thousand yeah. dollars. You just couldn't get it out. I mean, maybe what, companies what? like. Icon Motors and Singer, yeah. maybe they're ch- and then the the, the well, Ring Brothers, maybe they're changing. There, the game. there, there's one of the things that I've noticed, um, uh, Craig, and, and and please speak to this as well. But sure, some of the really well built cars, like a Ring Brothers car that they built a year Could or two ago, bucks. is going for good money. But some of the cars that were done back in the day, we're starting to see good money for Boyd Coddington cars come across. Oh yeah, I think Boyd. I've got a couple of Boyd's cars, because I do think he was such a pioneer. Um, He only built so many of them, and and I've said this before, you look back, people will look back on Boyd Coddington the way they do Fagoni Falashi or Sauchuk or one of those guys, because, and Foos, same way, he put pen to paper, made his design, and then they executed on it, and he made a bespoke hot rod, and he was really early adopter to do that now you know i've bought i've got two of his cars from uh american hot rod and yeah both of them got i would say uh came out of the oven a little early you know building those cars that quick uh, both of them need a lot of work afterwards to make them good driving cars but they're pieces of art yeah and uh you know i I bought one. I spent a lot of time going back and forth. About the second one, I just tore it apart right away and fixed everything that I knew I'd run into. Yeah. And, uh, you know, a lot of loose nuts and bolts, it, stuff like that, because they were in a hurry. But the artwork and the metalwork that was done on those cars, and, you know, almost every Boyd car made has no door handles. You know, he started trends. And, yeah, and he did. Trends from the 50s of French in the taillights and, and really bringing craftsmanship into the modern era. And now, you know, that is sort of the norm nowadays that people expect that kind of work. You look at what Dave Kindig is doing nowadays. Yeah, he does um, some great work. 
He does great work. We sold his Volkswagen bus here last year for three hundred thousand. Oh, that that's he had resto right. He did like a twenty-three window. Yeah, twenty-three window that he had resto modded and put a different engine in it. And you know, people appreciate craftsmanship, and I think that's part of what we're also seeing with the Gen Xers coming in and with the Millennials is they don't want a cookie cutter car. They want something unique. And, uh, you know, we're getting even younger kids coming in and we're working, you know, we're doing a thing here at the, uh, Equidome. We're doing a, a steam area. So we're into the STEM projects and steam trying to get kids into mathematics and all these things, but how you tie that into cars, because cars are so high tech nowadays yeah. and how you can put technology in older cars. And we're not far away from building, you know, electric assisted uh, resto mods and, uh, you know, cannibalizing uh, Teslas and turning those into hot rods. Um, it's coming. Yeah, we're and, there. Uh, uh, Schwarzenegger has a Mercedes G-Wagon. He's got the first, it was, it was resto mod. It was basically converted to electric and uh the Z Bug, I think we talked to the Z Bug guys or something. At Kimmel some point. I has think that Kimmy, a, Jimmy Kimmel has Jimmy has a, has a thing, a, a Volkswagen, Volkswagen thing, thing that's electric. all electric. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny all the electric car companies go after the most aerodynamic as possible you know uh to put the least amount of uh, draw on the motor and then make it quiet when it's going and then when you start with a thing you're all of that goes out the door right uh, yeah i think it jonathan does. ward didn't jonathan ward have like an icon like a derelict icon rolls royce with electric motor he's building i think we might have saw it at sema in the optima booth he definitely had a derelict rolls royce i don't remember i can't remember the the electric motor yeah i think he's part. doing an electric motor and he you know and, and of course he machined uh like like a battery pack oh, or something with some covers like, and it like made it look, yeah it looked like heads so it's some pretty interesting uh stuff the website barrett jackson sorry barrett-jackson.com the uh it, it's January 13th through the 21st, Westworld of Scottsdale. Uh, Matt's going to be there, so Matt's going to report on uh, it. I'll be home uh, watching from uh, uh, my sofa on TV on Discovery and Velocity. I, I never, never miss it. Uh, and then, uh, Craig, I guess we'll probably see you uh, up at Laguna Seca this year. Are you racing this year? Yeah. Yeah, if they have Trans Am this year, they didn't last year. They uh, changed it out for, what was it, formula cars or something. Something. Uh, yeah. Anyhow, but, I wanted to also mention before we go, all of our charity initiatives. We're selling the first Ford GT for charity. We are oh, kicking the off a year-long yeah. campaign uh, for the American Heart Association called Driven Hearts, and we donated a Corvette uh, to that because a couple of our great customers have died this past year year or two from heart disease uh, or related symptoms. And, uh, you know, that's part of our initiative. We're at $96 million. Our goal is to hopefully by the end of Scottsdale be at $100 million raised for charity. And uh, that's part of our core of Barrett-Jackson. So watch on Saturday. There's going to be four fantastic cars going across on Saturday. I love it. Charity. Charity when, you're in the room, when you're in the room watching those cars go, it gets exciting. It really gets exciting. And, and, and anybody out there that was really in the market for a Ford GT and didn't get on the list, this is the only chance you got. That's right. That's it. <laughs> This, this and John is Cena. This is John Cena's car. You don't want to get sued. This is your opportunity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Craig. We'll see you at uh, Pebble Beach. Very good. Thanks, Thank Craig. you very much. Uh, thank you for watching. And, Matt, we will see you next week. Thank you. Uh, good guy. Craig Jackson, uh, Bear Jackson. And, yeah, a lot of fun. And, and honestly, for, uh, for me, uh, much more enjoyable now that they have this crazy variety. Because Barrett Jackson was known as kind of the American muscle car auction. And yeah. then, you know, Gooding, RM, or whatever would be more the sports car, race car, whatever. Now they got lots of European offerings and lots of cool American stuff. It, and it's it's really diversified I, and made a lot more fun for guys like me. It's, it's, a, it's a fun event. And I'll tell you, if you really like the cars, you're really just into the cars – Pop in over there on a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and just walk the aisles. There's got to be miles. <laughs> you know, what do you say, 1,700 cars? Yeah. You yeah. could just walk up and down the aisles and just see what an incredible collection of of cars that are being uh, being sold there. Yeah, it's, so a it's, good, fun. it's a good time to uh, it's a good time to be in the cars. Um, all right, let's see. 
can Adam come up with a bigger piece of crap than the uh, 1992 uh, Rocky Daihatsu? Um, I, I I do. Like one of my things. What are you talking about? That thing's cool looking. One of my things in <laughs> life. Well, uh, first off, I love things like <laughs> that. I love names like the Daihatsu Charade. It's weird. Tell me you look at this thing and tell me that. Rutledge Wood doesn't own one of those. No, Rutledge Wood has to own one of those. <laughs> yeah. I, I also, I also like like. Now, Max Pata, look up Nissan Murano, but when we're in Florida, uh, sorry, we're in Maui. Uh, Cousin Sal rented a Nissan Murano. Oh, a convertible. Per- no, the Murano's. A, no, they make an SUV. They did for like a stint, like a I want to say like a Murano convertible. Right. Oh, they did. Well, it's it's perfectly fine, but Murano is also a term. I think it's a term for Jews who posed as Christians, so they wouldn't be. They basically during the Crusades and during whatever what was going on when they're persecuting Jews in Spain or something, the Jews would say, "Oh no, I'm not Jewish. I'm one of you. Like, don't kill me." And the Jews referred to those people as moranos, like a moron, uh, yeah. like a traitor. You okay. see what I'm saying? Now, it's spelled a little bit differently, but why get that close? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Morano uh, yeah. it means moron. It's, it's, like, it's Yiddish for the guy's a moron. And I think it comes from – Chris, you got to look up the history of Murano. Is that the inside joke over at Nissan? They're like <laughs> – Well, and then Daihatsu Charade – I don't know if they spell charade differently than charade, but it's not really... They must. <sighs> the Daihatsu charade? By the way, just so I'm not insane, I Nissan did make a Murano convertible. That's a weird convertible. <laughs> it's it's SUV terrible. SUV convertible. <laughs> yeah, Murano, uh, the uh, Jewish uh, term, <laughs> it's, it's M-A-R-R-A-N-O. And it's uh, yeah, Jewish who, had to, who were in... Uh, Where is it? Iberia? Iberia, who uh, were forced to convert to Christianity. Is that the is that the origins of moron? Must be moron, <laughs> right? Like that guy's a moron. That's what it Jewish... sounds like. It sounds like that's where it would come from, right? And I'm just saying, don't name your car after a moron. Yeah, there's other names. There's, I mean, there's, there's other an XT17 or that's something. What I'm saying, you know what yeah. I mean? moron is uh, Greek and is moros for f- uh, foolish. So moron comes so, from the Greek so term. So Morano, there you go. Morano has nothing to do with moron. Correct. But still, Morano is not a flattering term because it means a Jew that is pretending not to be a Jew, a cowardly Jew. <laughs> That's what they named your Ute at, sport Ute after. It would have been funnier if it was the Nissan Cowardly Jew. <laughs> it would have been funnier as a name. <laughs> Oscar, 34 from Dallas. Yeah, Oscar. Uh-oh. Oh, can you hear me? Hello. Yeah, there oh, you there go. There you go. Yeah, the Daihatsu. Uh, now, is the Daihatsu Charade spelled the same as Charade? We're going to look that know. up. All We're, I know is yeah. when I was uh, 16, that was my first car my dad uh, sold to me. Which one, and the Rocky? Was, the Daihatsu Rocky? Yes, yes. The thing didn't idle right. It was, I think it was five gears. Spe- it spelled idled, the it same, right? And charade and Charade. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't work right. I don't know. I got to say, like, I'm looking at the Daihatsu Rocky. It's, it, we're looking at one that's got a lift kit on it and some blacked out rims. So maybe it's not as bad as it could be. I, I got to say, uh, Jimmy Kimmel's dad, <laughs> it's a pretty bad car. It's oh, pretty there bad. It is, like, it's pretty stock bad. Trim, it's... Jimmy Kimmel's dad went to the car dealership when Jimmy was like, I don't know, 17 or 18 or something and came home with not one. But two Isuzu iMarks. Like well, it's, in, in it's like, BOGO. It's a buy one, get one, yeah, 50% like, off or whatever, whatever yeah, they they're doing. Like, the in, in like 1988. <laughs> and to me, that's a pretty bad car buying decision. <laughs> two yeah. Isuzu iMarks. I, well, uh, one to drive and one to store, one to I keep. He gave for one the money to, one he day. Gave one to Jimmy and he took one. And they're both <laughs> weird. I, I, you know, it's like he could have bought a Toyota or a Do- uh, Nissan yeah. or whatever. Yeah, I agree with you. It's pretty bad. I, I like, well, I, yeah. 
I, I've had uncles with pieces of crap where that's what they do is they buy two of them because they suck so bad you need one on hand just for the parts. Yeah, but you wouldn't yeah, buy them new. That's right. Like, wouldn't you just pool that money together and get something that's less embarrassing? I well, you think so? Well, well, no. Hold on. I, uh, yeah, I agree. Jimmy's dad was getting one for him and one for himself. I think that yeah. was the that was the problem. Okay. Uh, and way more what, my what dad's car, ever what done. What car was it? He's he, the Suzu. I mark. Oh, you know what a Suzu I mark looks like? I don't. I don't remember. It. No, we're gonna find. Now. Yeah, yeah. They're because pretty... I don't remember having a poster of that on my wall. So the image has escapes me. The Suzu I marks. They must have made. From like eighty four to ninety one or something, yeah. Yeah, Isuzu I mark. Uh, so says uh, Max Pata. It's tough. Mm. Yeah, they're, they're they're pretty bad. I don't know. Look, nineteen eighty eight Isuzu I mark. Just find a find a picture of one, and we'll we'll show it to you. I'm um, saying in eighty eight, you could have got a nice box body Mustang. That's right. Yeah, that's an Isuzu probably for the I same mark. price. There's a lot of bad out there, man. It's a there's lot a of lot bad. of. Bad. A lot of bad. A lot of bad. Uh, I remember, I think I had a roommate who had a Geo Metro. Yeah. Oh, the worst was the convertible or the Storm. The Geo Storm, like convertible yeah. or Metro convertible. I was thinking, is the Metro the convertible? The little tiny... No, the Metro's the three-cylinder. I went to school with a guy that drove like the little yellow convertible. Yeah. And... Uh, he would just smoke weed and deliver pizzas. Like that was his job. He was just like he would just like hot box that little car and deliver pizzas. I had uh, <laughs> I, it. It struck me as very funny when the Geo Metro or the Chevy the Chevy made uh, whatever they made a four door with a three cylinder. And I remember thinking, and then Isuzu made a just uh, made a. No, sorry. Subaru made a Justy. Okay. That was a three-cylinder. But I thought, I don't know if Subaru ever made a three-door, uh, sorry, four-door Justy. But couldn't couldn't Chevy, handle the extra weight? <laughs> Geo or Chevy or whatever made a four-door three-cylinder. And I just remember thinking, you got more doors than cylinders. I got to tell you, you've got a lot of knowledge about terrible cars. I like to study terrible, terrible everything. Like, I like terrible cars. I like terrible TV shows. I like terrible design and architecture. And the yeah. reason I study <laughs> terrible terrible TV shows, I can get because there's something ironic about it. But you like you just know too much about terrible cars. Well, the reason I'm fascinated with the terrible is for the same reason I have. No interest when I'm at a restaurant and somebody's carrying a tray and they knock it over and everything falls to the ground and breaks. I don't turn around and look. No, because you don't clap and do a whole thing. Like I, it's not. It is. It's none it of my business. And that had nothing to do with any planning or pre-planning or groups of people or design. That was simply a mistake. There's yeah, like when it's it's like a, I, I don't. I have no thoughts about things like train wrecks and and, and ferries overturning in, in in the Philippines and stuff okay, like yeah, that. Those yeah. are just accidents to me. And they're they're the you know oh the guy got hit by lightning. It's like I feel bad, but I have nothing and I have no thoughts yeah. or concerns about it. But when groups of like engineers, designers, mathematicians, CEOs. Everyone is in a room and they all have advanced degrees. It's not like, well, a couple, you know, we got a couple of guys from 500 years ago showed up on a donkey and they got some charcoal and they're <laughs> going to sketch something out on a piece of bark. <laughs> right. We have guys with advanced degrees in engineering, yeah. design, marketing, sales. They're all in one group. And then they're carving pieces of clay and putting stuff out on a computer and drawing stuff out. And at some point, they end up with this Pontiac Aztec, Aztec. or Pontiac <laughs> Firebird or Fire Champ or whatever yeah. the stupid fire things or Snowbird or Sunbird or something. And you're yeah. looking at it, and it's got the fake Allen screws and the steering wheel and the fake Allen screws yeah. and the dash and the fake plastic scoops. That, that Or it's just like the weird, the weirdest designs in the world, like the Le Car. A friend of mine had a car. The car 
Oh, five door Justy with the hatchback. Yeah. They did a five door. Okay. The Lacar <laughs> Sweet. The Lacar door handle wasn't a door handle, it was a button. Okay. It's a big, like, chrome button. You yeah. Just push. We're going to have to see that. The, the, you, b- yeah. b- look at the big button. It sounds sounds okay. Yeah. But it was back in the era. It had that little, did it have that little ring on the bottom? Like, you put the one finger under and you hit it? It had a little scoop out on the side, the door jam, where, where it scooped out, right? Okay. okay. Now, and it had a big button. But. It was back in the era when, in order to lock a car, you'd push the lock down on the door and then hold the handle up. Oh and close yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Well, the Lacar, <laughs> you had to hold the button down and then slam your fingers <laughs> into the door. Into the door. Yeah. I mean, it, it was it scooped out a little area, yeah. but you better be in like, the right. If you area. were just on the tips of the fingers. You, you were, were just slamming your, finger your fingers into the door. Just don't lock it. Nobody wants to take the Lacar. That's the, that's the solution, right? Like, don't lock it. I remember my, my friend Carl had that car. I was like 17. I was like, this is the worst. Who designed this? What, what are they thinking? Like, I think about that. All I do is, you know, I come into my son's room. He's asleep. The TV's on. The um, the, uh, the the remote is up in the we'll, – well, Chris will find a close-up picture of the car. Yeah, I can see what you're talking about. Yeah. Door. He'll, he'll get us a clear picture. But, yeah, that's you have to slam your own fingers in the, door, the door while pushing the button down with your thumb. That's great. Uh, but I have the same thoughts when I walk into my son's room and the TV's on and he's asleep. And the remote is up on the bunk. I built him a, a loft. Yeah. And I, I don't want to – and it's on the other side of him on a shelf I put against the wall. Like I'd have to climb up the ladder and climb over him. To get the remote. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. So I then go, well, I'm just going to shut the TV off, but there's 80 black buttons on the side. None of them are marked power. They're all the same shape. None of them light up. Yeah. They're black. They're black buttons on a black plastic background. There's no order to them whatsoever. And then I hit the first one, and it goes to antenna C. Right. And I go, like, this is a horrible design. You need to get the manual just to turn it off. Just put the goddamn button on the front so we can shut the goddamn set. Yeah. No, no TV. Like, even, even if you have like the eight buttons, but the one is lit, the one with the red light is lit because that's the power button. Like you can get away with that, but anything <laughs> but what it is now, which is eleven <laughs> buttons and nothing. And now yeah. we're looking at this Lacar. I, 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 oh. <laughs> I marvel at how these horrible. Horrible designs and horrible whatever. I marvel how they get pushed through, like how they make it. There's so much planning. Yeah. You have to get tools and dies. You have to tool up. You know, you have to get factories and stuff like whether it's the TV set or the horrible car. How did this happen? How come nobody <laughs> raised their hand and went like, what's going on? I, I think people confuse different for innovative and new, even though it's not necessarily better or improved. But they- I- yeah, I sat there and screamed at everyone at Alaska Airline when they're like, well, we, we gave you the red bag check. Yeah. Well, that means that means uh, gate check. The green is for the carousel. Okay. How would you Most our know customers that? know that. <laughs> well, evidently, I wasn't made aware of that. Yeah, well, most of them know it. I said, what, what inherently about these two colors says gate check versus <laughs> carousel check? Most our customers know. Okay, but why don't you write something on the card that says gate check and then one that says carousel check? So then we would know. We yeah. could take the guesswork over what what red and green connote in terms of where to pick your bag up. And I told them, just print it. Print it on the card. It'll say gate check. You'll have gate check cards and you'll have gate. And we won't know. We won't have to figure it out. And, uh, uh a month later, somebody tweeted me, oh, now it says gate check. <laughs> hey, look, you did. <laughs> it turns out it cost no to bring, more to make that This is me. Thing. This took me. I, I was put on academic probation at a junior college and graduated North Island High with a 1.7 GPA and dug ditches. Why am I telling you this insanely <laughs> obvious thing? And if a third person from Alaskan Airlines explains to me that their customers understand <laughs> inherently understand that the red means gate and the green means that also kind of says we don't want any new customers right like because if you're not in the club i'm I'm nauseated by like having to go through life and explain to everyone like how to run their business or how to how to design something or how to fix something or why would you do this like everything is horribly designed horribly 
I, I, I have a VCR at home that doesn't, it has no power, the power button on the front, the eject button, it's like they're black, you can't find them, you can't tell which one is which, like, it's, it's insane. First of all, it's, you have a VCR at home? I mean, a, a, a DVD. <laughs> it's, like, it's, just, it's all the same. Just, yeah, yeah, no, no, okay. It's all the same. We're the, we're the dumbest people in the world. I, and right. We just don't care. And it drives me. It drives me. My, my, my kid, my daughter, when my kids were little, they had a space heater. And the space heater had like six identical buttons on the top. And none of them lit up. And I would like to have to come in at night. My wife would say, like, shut the space heater up. But I bet you'd press a button. It would start oscillating. Yeah. Because the power button yeah. wasn't set. Separate. It wasn't lit up. Was I didn't want to turn the lights on and wake the kids up. It's just, it's a horrible. I mean, if you just take power buttons, just the subject of power buttons, and take a look at space heaters or take a look at TV sets, you realize we're damn near retarded. <laughs> and then if, if, if I was designing a space heater or a TV set or any appliance, the first thing I would go is like, blah, 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 power button. I need the power button. I can't. The, the, I, I feel the, 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 the goddamn same way about, key fob no, say, has a key picture fob. of a of a lock, and then the exact same lock barely unlocked. That yeah. rubs off because your thumb rubbed off the paint. Like, we're entirely the, different things. It needs we're the a dumbest on it. We're it needs so the... dumb. <laughs> we're so dumb. Why doesn't why isn't like now we have like that weird like universal symbol for power button, mm-hmm. the circle with the line through it. Why doesn't every one of those have like like the dot on it, like the Braille dot. Like if every key fob had the dot for lock that you can feel in your pocket and then the dimple for unlock, you would never have to look at your key fob and go, which one of these stupid things is lock and unlock in the middle of the night? You could just feel yeah. it. It was right? so dumb. And every new TV is exactly the same. There is no power. They're all along the side. They're in no particular order. And you just keep pushing buttons. My son's TV, I just kept pushing buttons. Nothing happened. Eventually, I thought I was just going to unplug it. But I didn't. I, it was down behind the bookshelf. So yeah. I just unplugged it from the TV set. But it turned out I unplugged the cable. <laughs> of course. And I had to have Ed come over and like redo the whole thing. <laughs> Just because I couldn't <laughs> shut the TV off. It cost $500 to turn that TV off. So I couldn't stand next to the TV and shut it off. All right. It's a great world. We, You guys are all idiots. That's why I'm disgusted at everyone. It's, it's the worst. Like I have four TV sets in the studio. I would have no idea how to turn them on. You have to feel along the I side. Don't. Yeah. Could we at least make the button different shaped? And I look, look, people say all the time, like, Hey, man, it's all about the bottom line. It's all about, okay, so what are we talking about? 19 cents? What's, what's the difference? I'd what's say the difference? No difference. Like, if you, if you, yeah, if you molded a button with the dot on it or put the light in it or something, it's so small of a cost that it wouldn't, right. it wouldn't. I'm, I'm By the way, charge me, <laughs> charge me an extra dollar for the $1,200 TV and give me a lighted button. Right. All right. And right in the middle that you can just walk up and punch off. Like you're bad because sometimes you have your remote and like the batteries run out, whatever, and you just want to go to bed. You don't want to redo the batteries that yeah. night. Or just, just give me a button in the middle I could push, assholes. All right. <laughs> Corolla drinks. Go say hi to Lynette uh, over there. We got the uh, Mangria going. We got the Endless Rant. We got the new Chardonnay and the Cabernet 33. Good stuff. Check that out. And uh, live shows everywhere. Just go to amcurl.com. Check that out. Get some merch and some buck slips and stuff like that. And uh, chassis.com and uh, shift and steer. Check out uh, Matt's podcast. Listen on uh, Podcast One. And uh, check out Barrett Jackson, too. Fun fun event. Fun to watch on TV. Yeah. So, until next time, Adam Kroll for Craig Jackson and Matt, the moderator, DeAndrea, saying, oh, we got a picture of... S- 17-year-old Jimmy Kimmel standing next to his Zuzu Heimar. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a personalized plate? Late yeah, night? Yeah, late night. Yeah. David Letterman, big fan. He was in Nevada then, yeah. He had late night on his bike. Called it. He knew wow. what he wanted to do. There's a man on a mission. Jesus. Mine said podcast with a K. <laughs> <laughs> so... Oh, by the way, do you think any Corolla ever had a, a uh, personalized plate? That costs extra. That'd be like twenty dollars. <laughs> so until next time, I'm Crow from Matt the Moderator, DeAndre saying, keep the air in the spare and the bag in the wheel. For the latest updates and call in times, follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Carcast Show. If you'd like to write in, fill out the form on CarcastShow.com. And don't forget to give us a nice rating on iTunes. 
CarCast is a Corolla Digital production and is produced by Chris Loxamana. For more information, visit carcastshow.com. We'll be right back.